Call all hands. Speak to quarters. Run out the guns. Stand by this tower battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lynn stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire. <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. from the Admiralty had stated two objectives. Impress the Russians and the Swedes with Britain's naval strength and ingenuity and at the same time, bring them into the war on our side if you can. Orders which might, of course, prove somewhat contradictory on occasion. So, once we'd entered Kronstadt Harbor, the Tsar himself had come aboard incognito. Even though he hadn't once admitted his identity, I'd hoped he'd been impressed with the fine show we'd staged for him. My old comrade, Captain Bush, was still puzzling about all this the next morning on our quarterdeck. Sir, was it actually the Tsar himself? Are you quite sure? Why, yes, of course I'm sure. But all that talk about the Comte du Nord, they themselves call the visit of that, sir. Well, he... Merely a name he uses when he's traveling. Oh, Bush, Bush, what an old skeptic you've become, hmm? I say, look forward, Bush, that, that smart little lugger with the insignia. Now, perhaps our answer's on the way. Mr. Hurst! Sail bearing quarters from the shore. Aye, aye, sir. I noticed. Well, let me know in the moment she's alongside, Mr. Hurst. If she carries a messenger, make him welcome. Aye, aye, sir. See the little bump, sir. Your craft seems interested, too, sir. Over there, at the starboard rail. He's just come from below. Oh, Sorger, you mean. He's a peculiar fellow, there. Did you know he was a Finn? He calls himself a, a man without a country now because of what the Russians did to Finland. Do you like him, sir? What do you mean? Oh, you don't, eh? Huh? Well, sir, I... It's a bit shifting. You're right. It amuses me, the Admiralty posting him to help me win the Russians over. Oh, well. Well, at least he speaks all these weird Baltic tongues. Yes, Mr. Hurst? Lugger alongside, sir. There's our officer aboard, bringing you this letter, sir. You wait for your answer. Thank you, Mr. Hurst. Give him a drink of rum or something. Aye, aye, sir. What did I tell you, Bush? Oh, look at that coat of arms, will you? Imperial Palace of Petov. Oh, yes, in French. Uh, I am bidden to dine with, with His Imperial Majesty and His Royal Highness, the Prince of Sweden, this afternoon at four o'clock. Oh, oh. And accompanied by my staff, uh, the officer who conveys this letter will serve as guide. <laughs> Dine with the Tsar this afternoon? What, sir? His Imperial Majesty, the Tsar of all the Russia's man. At Peterhof, his palace on the Iranian bound shore over there at four o'clock. Sir, uh, naturally I die. But I'm a mere lieutenant, sir. Yes, now, I think you need a little change. You still look a bit seedy. This preposterous Oriental document mentions a staff. Well, we must create one, since Captain Bush will stay here with the squadron. Now, who do you suggest besides yourself? Well, sir, I, I'm deeply honored and excited. You will need Mr. Sorger, I expect. Sorger? Uh, the clerk, sir. Wasn't he posted as your interpreter? Yes, he was. Now, just why they saddled me with that glum fellow. I... Oh, yes, yes, we must, we must have him along, of course. 
Then Hurst must go as first lieutenant, uh, protocol, and one midshipman. Which one, Mount? Uh, Summers is the brightest, uh, I may say. Well, the fat one? Well, very good. Summers it is. Well, please pass the word to him as you return to change your clothes. Uh, dress uniforms, of course. We must we must be off in, uh, oh, half an hour. I shall be ready, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. definitely was not near the water. We docked amid saluting grenadiers in monstrous bearskins, and then were ushered into carriages in which we drove for what seemed miles and miles past parks and terraced lawns and marble fountains. I couldn't help thinking how much my dear wife Barbara would enjoy all this. And at every turn there were sentries on guard, stiffly presenting arms as we whirled by. Oh, there now at last. The Peterhof. Just round the next curve, you see? Which would casual remark about assassination had turned my thoughts uneasily back to Sorga and that pistol. I remembered the man's brooding hatred of Russia, his bitter sense of oppression. And suddenly, great heavens, why hadn't it occurred to me before? Could it be? Could, could he intend it? Yeah, I grew cold. As we drew up before the palace and were met by swarms of liveried footmen, I contrived to have a word alone with Mound, who, with Sorger and the others, had occupied another carriage. Of all my company, I felt Mound was the most reliable. So you see what I mean, eh, Mound? I do see, sir. Of course. Quite shocking, sir. Member of my own ship's company. My own clerk. So it's inconceivable, isn't it? Oh, well, perhaps I'm imagining the whole thing. I hope so, sir. Well, help me keep an eye on him. It looks as if there'll be a crush of people. Now, watch out. Here he comes now. Who's this with him with all the gold lace? Please, you have the kindness to accompany me, Sir Hornblower. I trust that I see you in good health, Sir Commodore Hornblower. Thank you. I'm in the best of health, Excellency. And your squadron, which I had the pleasure of visiting but yesterday, in company with the Comte Dunon. You know. My squadron's in the best of health, too, Excellency. <laughs> yesterday, aboard your flagship, we discussed uh, very briefly this man Bonaparte, uh, his policies. Yes. It was, I believe, your opinion that his troops might constitute a real threat to Russia. Might, sir? I fear it's less conditional than that. Bonaparte overran Swedish Pomerania the other day. Sent 50,000 troops in the moment he got news of our appearance in the Baltic. Yes. Prince Bernadotte of Sweden is here even now. This evening he'll be conferring with his Imperial Majesty. Yes, I had heard so. Now, sir, Bonaparte now controls the entire Baltic coast, right to the Russian frontiers. That would be most convenient to him in one particular event, in the event of his deciding to attack you. Mm, perhaps you are right. And yet, you know, we've had a treaty with him. Oh, Bonaparte respects no treaties, Excellency. And now he's taken Pomerania, there's no base for an attack on his rear. He can march an army against St. Petersburg with no fear of it being cut off anywhere. Ah, perhaps, perhaps. There are so many ah, considerations, pro and con, but... Uh, for us, it promises to be a very difficult decision. Then what Your Excellency is saying to me is that... Come along. I am merely advising patience. Since there is no decision yet by those responsible for higher policies, I did not wish you to draw premature conclusions, nor to be over-hasty in communicating with your government. That was why I asked to see you privately. <laughs> we must not seek to hasten the slow steps of history. <laughs> and now, if I detain you longer, you'll be late for the Imperial reception. There are lovely ladies waiting to meet you. Ah, they will soon erase that troubled crown of yours, I am certain. after the Persian ambassador, His Excellency Gorzakan. And now, if you'll excuse me, there are other guests I have to welcome at this reception. Sir, closely, my friend, and you will see the Prince of Sweden enter with His Imperial Majesty, our Tsar.
Then suddenly I did see Sorga. He stood quite unobtrusively at one end of the gallery beside a pillar. But there was something in his attitude, fierce inner intensity that, that froze my blood. Alexander had conquered Finland. Prince Bernadotte had condoned the act, and there stood Sorga, hating both of them. I turned abruptly from the Countess and found the gallery stairs. I had to push my way through a dense crowd. I, where was Mound? I, I might need help. Oh, there you are, sir. Well, nothing's going to miss, sir. I've kept you inside pretty steadily. Don't be a fool, Mound. Look at him now. Come, follow me. Hurry. I felt an agony in suspense now. It was almost impossible to move through the packed onlookers, all standing there gaping at the celebrities below. Oh, no, excuse me. Your pardon, madam. I'm sorry, madam. Your, your pardon, sir. Come on, hurry. And there stood Sorga by his pillar, so absorbed he didn't even notice our approach. His hand went to his waistband beneath his coat. He was drawing my pistol. Shall I shoot, sir? No, no, no. Don't. Can't cause a commotion. There's just one way, one silent way. My sword. Stand back. I whipped my sword out of its scabbard. <laughs> Couldn't afford to miss my mark at the first stroke. Slashed quickly at the wrist that held the pistol. With tendon severed, the man's fingers opened nervelessly. The gun fell heavily to the carpet, and Sorga turned in open-mouthed surprise, staring first at the spurting blood, then at me, venomously. All right, Sorga, that does it. Make one more move, and you'll feel the blade somewhere else. Observe it's pointed at your heart. Well, is there anything to say, Sorga? No, Commodore. I have nothing to say. Now take the pistol, man. Look after him. Tie that wrist up. Get him out somehow. Nobody's noticed yet. They're all much too absorbed in their precious royalties down there. I'll find some of them, Hurst. I expect we can stow him somewhere. Yeah, good lad, good lad. Sorry, but I've got to get back down below. I act the untroubled emissary from old England. Don't worry, sir. I'll see he causes no more trouble if I have to sit on his thick head all the afternoon. Welcome back, Sir Commodore. I, I'm extremely sorry, Countess. I, I had no intention of... It was a great haste you showed in leaving me, Monsieur. I couldn't help but think I had offended you. Oh, no, 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 nothing like that. You see, uh, well... No, oh, never mind. I have forgiven you already. And please do not look so austere. But see, here come the royal party. They make the tour of the great company speaking a word to each. The Grand Marshal will soon present you to his Imperial Majesty. I've already met... Uh, <clears throat> no, no, my mistake. I, 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 I wonder, is the Comte du Nord not to be here too this afternoon? The Comte du Nord? I, I do not know him. Your Imperial Majesty, this is Commodore Sir Horatio Hornblower. Your Imperial Majesty? His Royal Highness, the Prince of Sweden. Your Royal your Highness? Imperial Majesty, Your Royal Highness. It is a privilege to meet Commodore Hornblower of whom I have heard so much. Indeed, we have all heard of his exploits. Oh, yeah. your majesty is much too kind. Uh, we appreciate your time here with us today, Commodore. It struck me as odd, everyone standing up to dine. But then one shouldn't question others' customs. The long tables literally groaned with food of all descriptions. Though it was quite odd, too. Perhaps I appeared a trifle mystified, especially when some gray, unappetizing-looking stuff was handed us by a footman. So the countess came to my rescue. That is caviar. Try. You will approve, I think. And, uh, and what's this in the glass? It, it looks like water. <laughs> no, no. It is not water, you'll discover. Ah. Vodka, Commodore. Vodka, ah. the drink of the people. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's very, very interesting. <laughs> uh, and this other stuff, this is caviar. Mm. Delicious, it's truly delicious. You know, it seems a bit um, unusual to a stranger to eat standing up, but, but you know, this is, this is one of the jolliest parties I ever attended, can't it? <laughs> Laughter, bright lights, beautiful women, music. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling quite, uh, quite, uh, quite exhilarated. <laughs> and that, that, that innocuous-looking transparent stuff, what did you call it? Vodka, Commodore. Ah, yes, yes, everyone here seems to toss it down in quantity, most casually, I must say. <laughs> Yes, I, I've been some time at sea, you know. It's a, a different kind of life. And then all this sort of thing. <laughs> well, you know, a bit, a bit harsh compared with this. I'm sure. Well, uh, now I think I'll have some more of that uh, that salad and, and some cheese. It's extremely good. Thank you. Your Highness, your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, dinner is served. Oh, by all the... <laughs> ah, 
How many courses, Count? Don't be concerned. <laughs> At least you've now discovered you like Russian preliminaries. <laughs> <laughs> I shall gladly advise you on which courses to neglect. Ah, uh, you have a kind heart, madame. Oh, yes. Do pictures interest monsieur very much? Pictures? Yes. Painting. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, The picture gallery of this palace is considered very fine. This evening after dinner, I could show it to you. Um, unless, of course, you would prefer to join the card players. Oh, no, no, no. I'd much prefer to see pictures, can't you, sir? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. well, after the royal party has withdrawn, if you are by the door on the far side, I shall show you the way. Uh, that would be uh, delightful, madame. My husband, the Count, used to be quite interested in pictures. I married him as a mere child. But after all, he is now quite elderly. He has lost interest in them, I'm afraid. Just as we rose and left the dining hall, man slipped up to outside the door. I thought you'd want to know, sir. We had him in the side room up aloft. Yes, good, good, good. You know I could trust you, man. He fainted with a loss of blood. We had to use a tourniquet. Half of my shirt. Summers and Hurst are guarding him. Anyone find out about it, Mark? No, sir. Nobody saw us go. Good, good. I poured some liquor on his coat. And from the smell of him, anyone will think he's drunk. Right. We'll smuggle him out somehow. But, sir, the sooner we get him away, the better, sir. Yes, you're right. Uh, well, uh, except that... Um, <clears throat> no, I... I, I I don't think we can hurry off at once. Uh, no, hold the fort, man. We'll... We'll have to stay here another hour at least, courtesy demands. But, but, sir, I... I, I thought, just as you say. Here you are, Commodore. I've waited, as you see. I said you had a kind heart, Countess Camieri. <laughs> the Italian pictures of the Cinquecento are in the farthest gallery. But um, perhaps you'd care to see the more modern ones first. Their gallery isn't quite so well lighted. Unfortunately, it's, it, it's just come to me that, well, I must return to my ship with the others. Yes, I'm afraid in, in times like these, you know, so many duties weighing heavily. Indeed? And it is not only now that you remember them? Well, I must. Thank you so very much for your great kindness to, to an, uh, an awkward guest and, and also for your, your, your friendliness. For me today, the... The Russians are the most delightful people in the world. But, but I, I must be getting back aboard my ship. of Britain amid all that gold lace and pomp and circumstance. A most amazing people, these Russians. Highly ambiguous as to their intentions in this war, yet going some lengths today to show me friendliness and sympathy. Oh, yes, yes, there, there was a rather attractive little country, sir. Well, I forget her exact name, who for a time made herself especially amiable in showing courtesy to us strangers. None of them here, however, can begin to compare with our English women, either in appearance or deportment. Just when we shall move out of Kronstadt Harbor, I'm not quite sure yet. I miss you so very much tonight. I send you all my love. Remember that. Your most obedient husband, Horatio. <laughs> Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.